Oh, Latch Jessica with Ogling to show you some DIY fashionable bunny ears for Easter time. Easy to make and even more fun to wear. So you can choose your style of fabric and I'll show you three different yet very similar ways to create these fashionable bunny ears. I had some beautiful lace sequin fabric and black embroidery vinyl fabric. I've seen a lace type before but I wanted to show you a solid version so it can get your creative juices running. You will need a hot temperature glue gun, glue sticks, 18 gauge wire, I bought mine at Lowe's because you get a lot more for your money than you would at a craft store. And if your package doesn't come with a wire cutter on it, then you'll need wire cutters. Scissors, a headband, I bought mine at Target in a three pack. Binding for two of the styles I'm gonna show you and some awesome fabric. Step one is to cut 23 inches of length of 18 gauge wire. You'll need two to complete the look. Step two is to lightly try and fold the wire in half. You don't want to create the sharp point or break or weaken the wire so that it breaks. Be sure to lightly find the center and you want to create a rounded tip for the ear. Lightly run the wires through your hand to create a more fuller opening. And once you have a general shape of the ear you want, you want to measure the distance between where the tip of the bunny ear is and where the wires intersect. It should measure about 8 inches from the tip of the bunny ear to where the wires intersect. Now you're going to twist the wires down together. Remember you want to keep that 8 inch gap between the tip of the bunny ear and the intersection so don't twist up. You want to keep it consistent between both ears. And don't forget to round out the ears again after you're done. Um, just so you know that my width for the ears are about 5 inches. Repeat for the second bunny ear and you can always add some character to your bunny ears by shaping a little indention on the inside of the ear. It's up to you. Step 3. Cutting the fabric. If you're using something like lace, which you're not going to be doubling, then you'll just need one rectangle that is a little bit longer and wider than your bunny ear. So I roughly cut out a 6 inch by 10 inch rectangle. If you're purchasing the fabric, you'll only need to purchase and buy six inches of fabric, which is pretty awesome. Step four, make sure your glue gun is plugged in and warm. Be sure to place your fabric right side down or nice side down, and now we glue. Be super careful, it's called hot glue gun for a reason, so it's pretty hot. Center your bunny ears on the fabric and start at the center of one side of the ear. This allows you to keep the pattern and fabric from shifting. Press a little of the hot glue on the wire itself and then lightly fold over the lace. I use my scissors to press it together since the lace will go since the glue will go through the lace very easily. But hot glue does cool fairly quickly, so after I press it with my scissors, I press it with my finger, but still careful because it is still warm. Now you need to glue glue the opposite side of the bunny ears. Be careful if your fabric has any stretch to it. You want to pull the fabric without stretching the fabric. If you stretch the fabric and glue it, your wire is going to bow. If you don't flatten the fabric taut, you're going to have saggy bunny ears in the middle. Don't worry, it's easier than it sounds. Glue the same way. A little on the wire, fold the fabric over, use the scissors and press. Work your way up or down. Just make sure that you're switching from the left side to the right side, from the left side to the right side, all the way up or down. At the top tip of the bunny ears, you'll simply glue the fabric together, creating a tip. Step 5. Cutting. You want to cut all the excess fabric off of the back, being super careful not to catch the front. Get as close to the glued metal as possible. I have some curved micro-tip scissors that I bought at the Viking Sewing Gallery, and they are my favorite. If you choose not to add the binding, you can skip to the part where I show you how to attach it to the headband. Next, I'm going to show you how I add bias tape to the two other style options. I purchased coordinating bias tape in a quarter of an inch width. Open the bias tape once. You'll be able to open it more, but we're only going to open it once. Leave a little extra on the bottom and then start gluing. You're going to glue the back side to the front side. So this is lace, the glue will go through. So you're just gonna sandwich it, just like I'm doing here. Put a little bit of the glue on the wire, sandwich the bias tape, the glue's gonna be hot, so be careful. <laughs> and you're just gonna press it through to the front. So how I glue down the top tip of the bunny ears is fairly easy. You're gonna add the glue on the opposite side, pulling the bias tape taut all the way over, 
and squishing it. Now you're going to get a little puckering on the top point, but don't worry, we're going to glue that down. And give it a second to dry. Then we're going to pull up the tip and we're going to put some glue right under that tip. Okay, just, just a tiny bit. You don't put a lot. You're going to burn yourself and it doesn't need it. So just a tiny bit. You're going to squish it in half so that the fabric is touching each other. And then we're going to put a tiny bit more, if it needs a tiny bit more on one side, either the left side or the right side, and then hold it down. You can kind of see that the glue is coming out just a little bit. It's that bright little spot. But as soon as it dries for like 30 seconds, you can just go ahead and pull that out. So now you have to repeat it for the front side. Just put a little bit and then press it down, sandwich it together, push it to one side, either the left side or the right side, and it's going to create almost like a miter. And again, if there's glue coming out, give it a few seconds to dry and then pull it apart. And it'll come right off without burning your fingers. Continue gluing all the way down the opposite side. Now, if you have any of the lace kind of sticking out the back side, then you can use your micro tip scissors and go ahead and cut that out without cutting your bias tape. It will just give it a cleaner look. Gluing the bottom, you're just going to overlap them. So glue one side down, the left side, give that a second to dry, then put more glue down and overlap it on the right side. Flip it over and repeat for the front side. I lined up my headband on my self-healing mat and situated the ears an equal distance apart that was appealing to me. It was roughly about 4 inches. This gave me a visual of where the ears needed to be on the headband itself. I then bent the wire that was twisted from the back, underneath, around, and above the headband, trying to make this tight with my fingers, but then I ended up using my scissors to help me bend it so that it was really tight around the headband without breaking the headband. I did both the left and the right ear before I glued it down to make sure it was proportionate and where I wanted it to be. Once I liked the placement, I then added the glue to the wire and the headband. I was a little generous, but not so much that the glue dripped, so take your time. Let the glue dry for a few seconds, 30 30 seconds to 60 seconds and then add some more. Be sure to add it to the left side and the right side of the wire as well as underneath the headband. Next using some scrap fabric, cut out rough squares and these don't have to be perfect, they just have to be rough about one and a half inch squares and I added just a dot of glue for each square. There was really no pattern. As you can see I'm just putting the glue down and then adding the squares. I placed them in the front and the back and then underneath the headband. So I wanted to cover the wire and the glue that's going to be underneath the headband that's actually going to be sitting on my hair so that nothing gets caught. And if you glue that one piece to the front and the back of those flowers, it's going to be really secure. And now for the awesome black embroidered vinyl fabric. You are going to create the bunny ear wires the exact same way, but now you're going to need four six inch by ten inch rectangle you're gonna need two for each ear so once you have that cut out place one fabric right side down the pretty side down center your bunny ear on that fabric then you're gonna place glue on the left and right center on the wire then taking the second rectangle you're gonna sandwich it by doing wrong sides together so glue all the way down from the center, glue, make sure you're gluing the wires, but also start gluing the center of the fabric itself so that it's completely secure. Now give that a few seconds to dry. Once it's dried, you are going to take your scissors. Now you have to use your fingers right now. You have to really feel for where the wire is within that sandwich of fabric. And you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut as close to the wire without cutting the wire because if you cut the wire with your fabric scissors you're going to put like a dent and a burr in them and it's not going to be fun. So fill with your fingers and closely cut as close to the wire as you can. So I wanted to go with a contrasting color of bias tape so I went with the cream color that I had used for the lace and I do believe this kind of softened that black look since it is Easter. 
Um, a little difference in the gluing is you have to glue on the side since it's not lace and the glue won't go through like penetrating to the front you have to glue the side wire and then glue down the center of the bias tape on some of them I had to glue put add a little glue in the front and the back of the bias tape but it wasn't too much so it's really about the same as soon as I got my visual cues by lining up my headband and spacing it out roughly about four inches, I wrapped it around the headband the exact same way. Um, I did, I'm cheating here and using a, a needle nose plier, but you can still use your fingers and the scissors to help you bend it around the headband. Then glue the ears down to the headband. Again, not putting too much glue at once, just put enough, be a little bit generous, and then let it cool, and then add some more to the left and the right, add some more underneath, but you don't want to put too much because you don't want to melt the headband and weaken the headband, but you don't want to put too much that it drips and then accidentally gets on yourself, which would burn really bad, and I would know. Then I took some scrap fabric, and I wanted to cover up the wire just like I did with the lace, but it was a little bit different with this fabric since it does have raw edges, and you don't want to see the raw edges. So I kind of just took scrap strips about two, uh, two to four inches in length, and I let it wrap around organically like I didn't force it to go anywhere as if it wanted to go to the right I let it go to the right I glued it down I tucked in the raw edges I'm just covering up the wire and securing it to the headband by wrapping it underneath the headband and on top a tip I've seen tutorials out there where the girls coil the wire and glue it to the top of the headband I did try this but I understand why it failed hot glue and plastic aren't the best of friends. If hot glue doesn't melt and weaken the plastic, once the hot glue cools, it will pull right off the plastic as if it was never glued down. I understand that it looks a lot cuter to have it on top, and the way that I have it, it's kind of bulky, but just be careful of losing an ear. And be careful if it's warm outside, the glue will heat up just enough to loosen up and have your ear slide off your headband. No worries about the bulkiness. It is still totally comfortable. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. Have a happy Easter. God bless. See you next time.